economic power, voting power was in New York City, Philadelphia, and Boston. They didn't want to, anybody to go to the West because that would dilute their power. The Southerners that, that came in, starting with the Northwest Territory, today's American Midwest, brought into the United States from George Rogers Clark and 200 Virginians and Kentuckians captured in Sins, Indiana, uh, called Fort Sackville at the time from British forces. After that, we essentially told the British, we have this territory and we want it, would you give it to us without a fight? The British, to our surprise, said yes. So we brought in the great American Midwest, including all the way out to Minnesota and Wisconsin because of the sacrifices of those 200 Kentuckians and Virginians to go out and get that property. The Louisiana Purchase was brought into the South, the South by Thomas Jefferson over the objections of the Northeast. Politicians were so incensed about Louisiana Purchase and they threatened to leave the Union. What a novel concept. Listen to what Timothy Pickering of Massachusetts wrote to Rufus King, the other powerful politician from Massachusetts. If the separation shall be deemed proper, the five New England states, New York and New Jersey, would naturally be united. Among those seven states, there is an expectation of practical harmony and a permanent union with New York City as the center. Less than 20 years, the, the new nation had quadrupled its landmass thanks to Southerners fighting the British and fighting the Yankees and having Southerners in charge. Uh, by 1812, the Northeast was so angry that all of the early presidents were Virginians that they actually submitted a constitutional amendment to say that no president could come from the same state as the previous president. And that was because they didn't want another Virginian to be made the president of the United States. They wanted to give themselves some power. 1846, the nation again grew we had the war with Mexico. President James K. Polk, North Carolina and Tennessee, he brought in all of the Great West. But he also brought in Oregon and Washington, proposed the British without a fight being given at, at all from the British. Even the little Gadsden Purchase, on the side of New Mexico, came in because of Southerner James Gadsden of South Carolina. Put it in that we wanted to buy that little piece from Mexico because we wanted a transcontinental railroad. And <coughs> know who the, the man that had this idea of the Transcontinental Railroad was. It was a Secretary of War by the name of Jefferson Davis. He believed that we should have a way to get across the nation easily. Southerners created a very distinct culture that the nation still enjoys. I can't think of a single piece of music other than rap music that is not Southern in nature. Look at the pioneers of rock and roll, Fats Domino, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, Elvis Presley, all Southerners. Look at gospel. Set apart from the Harry Jackson, the Blind Boys of Alabama, Rockabilly, which influenced rock and roll, Blue Melodies, Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, Look at Blue, Buddy Water, John Lee Hucker, Robert Stewart, Alex, Mississippi. When the Rolling Stones and the Beatles came over here in the 1960s, they didn't go to New York City and ask Leonard Bernstein, can they sit down and jam with him? They asked Buddy Waters and John Lee Hooker if they could play with him. They recorded albums of these. Uh, black blue singers. The South and Southern won World Wars I and II. Like Chuck Kirsch in Missouri grew up talking to former Confederates. His father was a Unionist. These Confederates all had come around his uh, father's store and he grew up with a love of the military and a love of these men. In World War II, all of the major generals and admirals of the war had either Southern were either Southern by birth or had Connecticut, Connecticut roots. I have to equivocate a little bit with uh, Douglas MacArthur. His father was a Union Medal of Honor winner, but his mother was a diehard Confederate with four Confederate brothers. None of those brothers attended the wedding of John MacArthur and, and uh, their sister because she was marrying a damn Yankee. But his mother made Douglas MacArthur who he was. She went and rented an apartment at West Point and looked out for him the whole four years at West Point. Dwight Eisenhower was born in Texas, the worst of Robert E. Lee. We kept a photograph on Lee on his desk. In the summer of 1960 at the Republican National Convention, he made a speech where he talked about how Robert E. Lee was one of the greatest men that ever lived. Well, a dentist from New Rochelle, New York, wrote the president a letter saying, how in the world could you praise such a traitor as Robert E. Lee? What the man fought against the United States. About a week later, this man from New Rochelle got a letter from the White House, a White House stationery signed by Dwight Eisenhower, unbraiding him 
for having the, the dare to criticize Robert E. Lee. Can you imagine being a little old dentist and you get a letter from the President of the United States virtually damning you for, for what you had said about Robert E. Lee? You wouldn't see any president from there on do such a thing. This letter is, is uh, uh, in the uh, White Eisenhower uh, Library now. And one thing that Eisenhower said, he said, if every young boy lived to the ideals of Robert E. Lee, this nation would have no trouble at all. Commanding officer, the commanding general, 8th Air Force from Europe, the generals commanding the 82nd, 101st Airborne dropped into France on D-Day, all Southern. The Admiral who won the Battle of Midway, the general on Guadalcanal, all Southern. Now, Union General Guadalcanal was a fellow named Chester Ford from West Point, Virginia. At one point, his officers came running into the shack and said, General, the Japanese are in front of us, behind us, and on both flanks. Ford said, that's great, attack in all directions, we've got it where we want it. George Patton, I have to quote a name, actually born in California, but he was a grandson and great nephew of uh, veterans that were killed in the war in Gettysburg and Winchester. Uh, George's sister told, tells a great story that there were, when he grew up in the house in California, there was a picture of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson on the wall. She says George was a teenager before he realized it was not God and Jesus Christ hanging on the wall. All of you here today are descendants of great men and women. I myself am descended from an ancestor who fell in the Battle of Chickamauga, mortally wounded, 72% killed and wounded in his regiment. Another ancestor lost his arm in Fredericksburg, uh, but survived. Another was captured in Missouri Ridge, Tennessee, and spent two years in the prison camp in Ohio. Another was driven insane by the war. On his kitchen application, it says, out of brain by the war. That's one thing that might have common with uh, my ancestors and your ancestors is all of these men and women who sacrificed something for this war. They did not take up arms against the United States until the United States threatened them. We'll hear people say, well, the Confederacy started the war when they fired on Fort Sumter. Well, no one was killed at Fort Sumter by Confederate fire. There were uh, one killed immediately and one mortally wounded who later died, Union soldiers. But they were killed when their own cannon blew up, when they were there firing salutes to the United States flag. They did not die from Confederate fire. Confederates allowed that the garrison at Fort Sumter to go to New York uh, unharmed. Very own at that time, the South said, this is over. Uh, President Jefferson Davis says, all we want is to be left alone. That didn't happen. Uh, think of uh, what happened at Fort Sumter. People old enough to be uh, Gulf of Tonkin in uh, 1964, Vietnam, where a very minor incident blew up and the United States said, this is what we need to attack Vietnam and start building up the force. And essentially the same thing happened in the United States. Uh, that the South considered the war pretty much over and they were going to go their own way. Every battle after Fort Sumter for the first year and a half was due to Union aggression onto southern soil, invading Virginia and what is now West Virginia, coming into the Outer Banks of uh, North Carolina uh, in August of 1861. Uh, everything came about with active uh, attacks from the United States. We really should call, while I, I'll use the term Civil War myself, it really was the war for Southern independence. The South wanted to, to go its own way and to carve its own way out. The Civil War, by ne definition, is two fighting factions trying to, to, to take over the capital of the, of the government. The South, by definition, did not want to take over Washington, D.C. That was capital.